Okay. Uh, right, a little bit more of an introduction. Uh, okay, so let me um, segue into this topic by talking a little bit about the types of optimi optimization that you've seen before. So here's the type of problem that you would have seen, I think, uh, in maths one. So a linear programming problem. So maximize some uh, linear uh, linear function here, um, you know, uh, with some constraints. And this is the sort of thing that you can solve using the simplex algorithm. So in maths 1a, I think it was, um, you would have seen problems like this, uh, and you and you learned how to solve them. So this is it doesn't take too long uh, to figure out that the solution to that uh, is. The, the, maximi, the maximum of that function is z equals 28, uh, when x2 equals 7 and the other two equals 0. So that's a linear, uh, that's a linear programming problem, uh, and you've, you've seen that. This one, you've kind of seen this, um, in fact, you, you've seen this uh, even earlier uh, than in maths 1. Uh, this is essentially a high school problem, where you've got a piece of, um, a piece of card, a uh, piece of, you know, of cardboard, you're going to cut four squares out of the middle uh, and fold it up um, and try to make uh, a box that's got the highest possible volume. So that's a calculus problem. So it's, very, it's similar to the last uh, one, except that it's, um, it's, uh, it's got continuous, you know, continuous variable x rather than, well, rather than discrete variables. Um, and it's quadratic, or it's cubic, this one, I guess. Um, so you know, the function that you're trying to maximize here it's got an x cubed in it because it's a volume problem, um, and you can, you know, you know, you'll know that you can solve this um, by differentiating uh, that v function, setting it equal to zero, checking that you have a maximum or a minima, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, and then uh, writing down writing down the solution. That's a high school calculus problem. So you know, it's of the same sort of form. So you're maximizing something um, such that. Uh, you have some conditions that are satisfied here. Um, so you have some constraints. It's a constrained optimization problem. Um, uh, but uh, you know, those constraints are pretty, pretty obvious. So x can't be more than half the, uh, half the width of this uh, cardboard here, and x can't be more than half of the, uh, the height of this cardboard. So they all have to be positive numbers. Um, but you know, that's the sort of thing that um, the solutions in the notes, um, you can do that. Uh, pretty straightforwardly. Uh, here's something that's a bit more advanced, or a bit uh, that looks a bit scarier. Um, but you have done this uh, in second year, uh, in multivariable and complex calculus, I think. Um, a function of two variables, so a surface, um, and where you look for you know maxima or minima uh, of some uh, surface, some function of two variables, x and y. Uh, and you do that by calculating this thing called the Hessian. Um, so all of the, the matrix of all the partial derivatives. Uh, and then you look for, uh, you, you look for conditions on that uh, Hessian. You look for things like the discriminant uh, of that. And you know, there are all these different conditions. Uh, yeah, well, you, you, once you look at the eigenvalues of this matrix, um, you can decide whether um, stationary points, so where f of x uh, the derivative with respect to x is equal to the derivative with respect to y uh, is equal to zero. Um, you can classify whether points are, are maxima, minima, uh, or some type of saddle point. Um, so you had a bunch of rules that you could uh, figure out there, which come from looking at the discriminant, um, and they tell you all sorts of things about this uh, about this surface. So there's interesting things that you can have. All right, so this gets pretty non-trivial um, at this point because you could have local maxima. Uh, you can have, you know, saddle points. You can have uh, a minima, or you can have saddle points like this. Uh, you can have maxima for this function that occur on some complicated, uh, on some complicated locus of points. So on a circle, on a rim, something like this. If the surface looks like that, um, or you can have this is called a monkey saddle. Um, you probably don't, uh, you probably don't remember it. So it's where um, the derivative. Oh gosh, what is it again? Uh, uh, it's where uh, it's a maximum, local maximum in one direction, or I guess this is a, 
and there's a minima in one direction and it's a saddle point when you look in the other direction uh, like this. So it's sort of shape that a monkey sort of uh, can sit in. So, you know, it's another calculus problem uh, and you've done all the machinery. Uh, you're looking at uh, all the machinery for how to do this. Um, but, you know, you can get sort of interest, start to get some interesting behavior out of it. So that's all the stuff that's technically um, you've seen before uh, and you know how to do. So here's a harder thing. So this is something that looks like a, um, one of those linear programming problems, like the first type that I showed you. It uh, looks like a lot like something that you can solve using the simplex algorithm. So it's got, you know, it's got x1, x2, and x3. Uh, it's got constraints where the sum of uh, all the different variables have got to be uh, bounded, things have got to be non-negative. But it's more complicated now because the function that I'm trying to optimize is not a linear function anymore. So whereas before this was a linear function, uh, this is a quadratic uh, here now. So I've got products of x1 uh, and x2, uh, and then constraints. And so that quadratic um, uh, there makes this problem harder. So that's the sort of thing, uh, one of the sorts of things that we can look about um, uh, in this course. Uh, you know, the, the next thing is that, well, I mean, the second type of problem I showed you was one where you had a cubic, or um, a function that you could differentiate. So you could solve uh, f of x is equal to zero really easily. So, uh, you know, and actually this, uh, the, that need not be the case. And actually one of the first types of optimization problem that we'll look at uh, is where f of x is a black box. So where you don't actually know about uh, uh, f of x uh, at all, maybe you just have some piece of code, some piece of computer code that somebody's given to you, um, and you can't di differentiate that. You can't differentiate and set equal to zero. Um, so you, can't act, you can only just get values of f of x out by plugging into some code. So there's plenty of cases where that might be. Um, so you know, you could get given the code to some complicated model, so a weather model or a climate model uh, or something. And so, and I mean, that's exactly um, what people who do weather prediction um, have. So, you know, you could have some thousands of lines of computer code for a weather, weather problem. Um, and actually, you know, I put this example up here deliberately. In order to create a weather forecast, it turns out that every six hours, you have to do an op you have to solve an optimization problem um, for this, but you've got no hope of differentiating a numerical weather prediction model. You might have something like a neural network, right? You might have some complicated um, arrangement of neurons in a, uh, in a neural network or some, in some machine learning model that output, that want to output, you know, is this image a cat or a dog uh, or something like that. And it's not, it's technically not always impossible to differentiate these things, but it might be uh, very unpleasant to do so. Or, I mean, there's even, um, you know, uh, things that I can write down, functions that I can write down uh, using mathematics um, uh, where I can't differentiate these things, like the absolute value of x. Right? So the absolute value of x um, you know, it looks like a little v-shape. And if you think about that at the point x equals 0, well, the absolute value of x is not differentiable uh, at x equals 0. So you can't actually... Um, differentiate this, if you try and differentiate this thing and set it equal to zero, you can't formally solve that. Um, so you can't actually do that optimization. So this is actually very, very common. And we'll talk about uh, how to do optimization in these sorts of problems in just a sec, actually. Or, you know, you might have um, something that you can't even write down um, mathematically very easily as well. So chess um, uh, is an optimization problem. Um, you know, and if you watch the Queen's Gambit, there's a nice little bit at the end um, where they kind of do um, uh, using human beings uh, for her to win this game. They sort of uh, map out what a computer does when it's playing chess to sort of um, play forward imaginary games uh, and things like this. So, you know, and this is something you can cast as an optimization problem. You know, f of x could, uh, could be the percentage of times that you win some game uh, for some sequence of moves x. So if you can imagine writing down a sequence of moves in chess uh, as some vector, uh, some vector x, then you can uh, imagine the number of times that you win 
uh, using that uh, sequence of moves, so an f of x. Um, and then that's a very complicated high dimensional uh, thing to optimize. And so essentially what chess play robots um, are doing are they are trying to optimize um, something here that you can write down, um, that you can encode uh, as with some mathematical notation as a function. So these are all the sorts of things that we're going to look at in this course. Okay. Um, so a quick bit of notation uh, and, some t uh, and some conventions that we'll use in the course. So um, lowercase letters, so x will be a scalar, bold x will be a vector, uh, x at the end, uh, and you know, uppercase will be a matrix. And then the general problem that we're going to solve throughout the course um, is this, is find the minimizer x, usually uh, a vector of some function f, uh, usually mapping from the space of these uh, of this vector, so from some high dimensional space to a number um, such that x satisfies some set of constraints. And we'll be pretty broad about what we let f be, um, uh, yeah, and, and what those constraints are, um, as you'll see in a sec. Uh, and that's the notation we're going to use. So here are some things um, that'll come up a lot. Um, so, you, you know, a common sort of cost function that we'll use. Uh, is a Euclidean distance, so we'll use um, Euclidean norms a lot. And there's a certain trick uh, that we're going to use here uh, very regularly, which is a quadratic form um, of a vector. So, you know, the equivalent of AX squared um, for vectors X is going to look like X transpose uh, AX. So if X is a column vector, then X transpose is a row vector. Uh, X transpose times a matrix A times X is going to be a scalar. Um, and so it will, you know, if, if A is a diagonal matrix, um, then X transpose AX will look like uh, that sum of the AIX squares. So we'll use this, uh, we'll use this quite a bit. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll talk a lot about gradients and things, um, as you might expect in an optimization course. Uh, and we'll write the Hessian, you know, so the matrix of Mitch of mixed partial derivatives uh, with a scripty H. Uh, yeah. So as I finish this video, a few questions to ponder before I talk about our first uh, optimization method. Um, does the minimum of F uh, always exist? Can I always find, um, uh, and can I always optimize any function? Um, and the answer is, of course, not always. Um, and you can see that pretty simply and straightforwardly. So, for example, if I give you um, the function f of x equals log x uh, for x between 0 and 1, well, that diverges as x goes towards, uh, x goes towards 0. Uh, so you can't optimize that. So you can't find the minimum uh, of that function. So, you know, some just closed form functions won't have uh, optima. Or um, uh, even trickier ones, something like this, even though this function is bounded um, between 0 and 1.2 or whatever it is uh, there, you know, this function also doesn't have, a, uh, doesn't have a minimum. Even though it never goes below 1 in the y direction, there's no minimum to this because the closer and closer that you get uh, to 0 0.8, 0 0.7, um, from the left, you know, you get closer and closer to one, but you never actually reach it. One's not in the domain. So any number that you tell me is the minimum uh, of this function, um, you know, I can tell you a number that's smaller. It's closer to one uh, from above, but not touching it. So that does it. So you can't actually minimize that. You can bound it below uh, at x equals one, but it doesn't have a minimum. So that's, you know, tricky math tricks. Uh, that's it.